Welcome to the League of Home Not the Light. Uh, in this this particular episode, we're going to go ahead and call it the Savior in Between, and we're going to be covering a lot of material for you guys. We're going to be covering First Peter chapter three, verses sixteen through. <laughs> To possibly the end of the chapter. We'll see. And also, 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. And then afterwards, we are... I'm going to treat you guys with a little musical treat if I'm able. So let's go ahead and get started. Opening up the Gospel Library app. <laughs> I thought I'm going to play some of the scriptures today. I've been reading a book that I discovered when I was in college at, at Home Group Bible Study by Dr. Charles Stanley. Some of you in the church don't know who he is. He's a Baptist theologian. But he wrote a book called How to Listen to God. And I studied it for about, about a month or so. So... But anyway, I digress. Let's go ahead and go into chapter 3 of first book of Peter. First Peter. And then we wrap it up. Here we go. First. Verse 16. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. Now, conversation. What, what that means in the uh, JST is, is, is conduct. Well, you bet it's from traditional Hebrew, so... Conduct in Christ, okay? So therefore, verse 17. For it is better if the will of God be so, that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. Verse 18. Okay, this is, this is where some of the meat is, guys. For Christ also hath, for Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might Bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Okay, let's take a look at verse 19. Let's take a look at verse 19. That tells you what he did between his death and and uh and resurrection okay he went and taught the spirits in prison okay it's the beginning of the plan of salvation okay and that tells me that there is such a thing there is such a place as spirit prison now, verse 20. Okay, we're going to read this in the JST. It says, okay, let me go to the JST and read it that way. Some of whom were disobedient in the days of Noah, while the long suffering of God waited, while the ark was preparing. Wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. You see, this is something that helped me, uh, helped me understand. My buddy Keith said this upon my baptism. He said, the earth was baptized by water once. We are baptized by water once. We don't need to be baptized again. Okay?
So, verse 21. The lock figure, wherein two, even baptism doth also now save us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. What is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of or who is going to heaven and is the right hand of God angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. Okay, let's look at this first part. Angels. That's pretty obvious. They are subject to him. Okay? Authorities. That tells you something. And, and what that means to me is principalities and everything that is created is to be under his submission. Now, with that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to... Well, <laughs> okay, verse, ch chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. And then we're going to go ahead and after that, we'll talk a little bit. Uh, for as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. Well, what does it mean to be the same mind? If you look in the Greek, it, it means thought, okay? And the same thought. And then you have a JST here. For you who have suffered in the flesh uh, should cease from sin, that ye no you no longer that you no longer the rest of your time in the flesh should live in the flesh to the to the the lust of man but to the will of God. That's pretty powerful. Okay, now now verse three that be that he no longer should live the rest of okay we already covered that verse verse two rather Verse 3, for the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles, where we waited in uh, lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, now, the King James says banqueting. Give me a second here. Let's see if I can find a word that's close to this. The modern equivalent that is in the King James went over to the Messianic Bible. What that means is binging, gorging. The Lord. That tells you something. I feel like I've been kind of indicted there. That called for repentance, right? And abominable idolatry. And that's why it's important. Listen to me. That's why it's important that we have our ears in tune to the Lord. Now, in the King James, hearken. A lot of modern ears think that hearken just means listen. No, hearken means listen and obey. All right, now listen to me. 
And so that's why it's important for us to begin to understand here and now. Here and now. That we need desperately to listen to the Lord and be ready when He speaks. Here's a song that I heard years ago. I want you to listen to this. With MailChimp, oh. you can design more engaging marketing assets in no time Why at all. Why do they do this? A little boy who heard God call his name while he was fast asleep. Little boy Samuel was asleep in the temple, asleep in the temple of God. He awoke to his name. Mm. <laughs> you, you, you get the gist. <laughs> Guys, we are called to seek revelation and to avoid the flesh, to do what we can to live, indeed, a very holy life. Alright? Now, with that, I'm going to say good night. Hope you enjoyed listening to Leah Home All Light. If you like what you hear, please subscribe. And become a part of the Leah Hunter Light family. It's Jimmy Hendrix saying until next time. Remember who you are. Read your scriptures. And preach the gospel. Take care. God bless. See you tomorrow night, hopefully.